Hello, hello. Let's talk about Super Mario today. Chris Pratt plays Mario and Charlie Day plays Luigi. Uh, John Legazamo is boycotting this movie because all voice actors are white. Oh lord. Come on, man. It's a cartoon. We can't even see their faces. The brothers run a plumbing business in New York. They're not the smartest, but they won't give up either. They find a network of pipelines hidden underground. Then one magic pipeline sucks them into the mushroom world. But the brothers get separated. Luigi ends up on the Darklands. He gets captured by Bowser, played by Blackjack, an evil turtle slash dragon. Mario lands on the colorful side of the mushroom world and met Toad, played by Keegan-Michael Key, a seasoned comedian as well. And to find Luigi, they need the help of Princess Peach, a warrior princess played by Anya Taylor-Joy. There's complaints that this movie is brainwashing girls to be a feminist. Oh lord. It's a cartoon, for God's sake. Let her have it. Princess Peach spent half her life chained in a dungeon. She deserves it. They didn't emasculate Mario or Luigi in any way, so it's fine. Both men and women are strong in this movie, so we're good. Okay, fine. A tall blonde rules a kingdom of little colored mushroom minions. Now, there's a perfect reason for that and I won't spoil it, but I promise it's not racist. Bowser is coming to conquer them, so the princess trains Mario for battle in an obstacle course. Which is like in the old video game, there's mushrooms to make you bigger and other power-ups. If you fall, you're dead and you have to start over again. I won't spoil any more of it, but there's a twist in Bowser's character. It's very funny. There's a reason why they picked Black Jack for this role. He's done this before in Nacho Libre. That's the clue. Encarnacion! Encarnacion! The whole theater exploded in laughter. My fart also exploded at that time, but no one heard it. That's how funny it was. Seth Rogen plays Donkey Kong and Fred Armisen plays his dad, both seasoned comedians as well. If you're a parent, this is the perfect movie date with your kids. Almost all voice actors are comedians, so parents were laughing as hard as the little ones. Now, don't expect an amazing story like Toy Story or Inside Out. There's no deeper meanings or moral lessons, just a fun adventure. More like a superhero movie for kids, but adults won't get bored. It's also for singles almost 40 like me. Those who grew up playing Mario on a black and white TV or teens who played Mario Kart on their flat screens. In the Philippines, we don't call it Nintendo, we call it family computer because there's only one in the neighborhood and a hundred families will visit that house to play as long as they leave their flip-flops outside. This movie almost didn't happen because the 1993 live action Mario movie flopped at the box office. It also scored very badly with 29% from both critics and audiences. So Nintendo was afraid to embarrass themselves again, but not this time. It made 397 million worldwide on its opening weekend. The budget was 100 million plus maybe another 100 million for marketing. So they've already doubled their money in the first week. The producer said that if this is successful, they're going to make an NCU, Nintendo Cinematic Universe. And it looks like it's happening because it's the fourth highest grossing movie of 2023 so far, breaking box office records, including the biggest worldwide opening weekend for an animated film and domestic debut for a film based on a video game. So we might see a Donkey Kong movie with Seth Rogen or a Luigi's Mansion with Charlie Day. Jack Black may also come back for a sequel and possibly with Pedro Pascal as Wario. I don't remember who that is. Is Wario the war freak Mario? I think the biggest allure of this movie is nostalgia for the almost 40 like me. Kids and teens can also relate since Mario Kart is very popular among them. I mean, this game transcends generations. There's something in it for everybody. Thanks for watching.